Hello, my name is Nicolas Merritt, and I am going to be providing a review of the pain system and response throughout the body. So here we can see we have different sensations that can be experienced, and the touch and proprioceptive sensation can come from the musculature, and then we have a pain and temperature sensation which can come through the skin. Each of those nerves are going to be afferent nerves, that are going to travel through the posterior horn of the spinal column and go into the spinal cord and that information is going to travel up to the brain via different order neurons. In each of these we have the first order neuron which is going to uh, take that sensory information, the pain, the second order neuron which is going to transfer that pain signal to the brain and the third order neuron which is going to translate it and the brain is then going to release uh, endorphins and different chemicals to decrease that pain signal. So if we look at the first level one gate control theory, it's going to focus on the first order neuron. And this gate control theory is based off of the concept of A beta fibers, A delta fibers, and C fibers. These are all nerve fibers. The A beta fibers are large, they're highly myelinated, and information travels rather quickly through them. A delta fibers and C fibers are smaller, not as myelinated, and information travels slower. We know that A beta fibers transmit the information of sensory signal. So if you rub your skin, touch your skin with your fingers and rub across it, that's an A beta signal firing to your brain. You're feeling that due to the A beta fibers firing quickly. If you have a motor response or pain signal, the motor response would be signaled by the A delta, and the pain response would be signaled by the C fiber. If you have a pain response due to muscle contraction, both the A delta and C fibers will be firing at the same time. This would explain why when you have one signal traveling quickly and one signal traveling slowly, the theory states you can only have one signal being transmitted to the T-cell that is sent up to the higher brain centers for them to be transmitted into information and sent back as an efferent signal for a response. So here we have the A beta fibers, A deltas, and Cs. Let's say I hit my head. If I decide to rub that place on my head, the pain decreases due to the override of the A beta fiber getting to the T-cell faster than the C fiber pain signal and the T cell is able to transmit that A beta signal fiber of the sensory input faster than the pain signal. The second theory also states that we can have the encephalin interneuron stimulated due to the stimulation of the A beta nerve fiber. So in this case the encephalin interneuron is going to cause a release of encephalin, which is going to override the C fiber and the pain signal and send that information through the T cell. So the pain is not experienced due to the encephalin being released. Both of these theories are through level one gate control theory, where the gate is closed and opened only on one direction, either sensory response or a pain response. Level two pain control goes to our second order neuron. So this is using pain to inhibit pain. It's using the brain process where the C fibers and A delta fibers are going to be stimulated to activate the T cell faster, which is going to send that information all the way up to the brain. And the brain is then going to release endorphins to decrease the pain that we are currently experiencing. Basically an override of noxious stimulus causes a decrease in pain. You can uh, relate this to someone who experiences so much pain that they can't even feel uh, the pain that they're experiencing anymore. And this could be due to shock, but this theory is related to central biasing. So upon the signal being uh, reached to the brain, the paraductal gray matter, or the PAG, is activated, and this causes an activation of the RAF nucleus. The RAF nucleus then sends information down to release serotonin, 
serotonin causes a release of enkephalin via the enkephalin interneuron, and the enkephalin inhibits further activation of the T cell with that pain signal. This can last up to one to three hours versus our level one pain control will only happen for as long as the stimulus of the A beta fiber is occurring. So here we have a similar situation, except now instead of having a sensory signal, we want to increase the amount of C fiber stimulation that is occurring to activate the T cell, then move up to activate the periactal gray matter, which causes the RAF nucleus to release serotonin. The serotonin release then causes enkephalin interneuron to release enkephalin and norepinephrine to inhibit the activation of the T cell sending pain signal. So in this case, we're causing pain to decrease pain, causing a signal to be sent through to T cell to deactivate the T cell. The level three pain control theory or the endogenous opiate theory is very similar to the level two gait control theory, except in this case, we're wanting a strong rhythmic contraction of muscle firing. This is activating the A delta fiber in case the other level two pain control was focused on activating C fibers. So here we have the A delta fiber activating the T cell to send information up to the reticular formation, stimulating the hypothalamus to release a beta endorphin from the anterior pituitary gland. This beta endorphin then causes our paracetamol gray matter to follow the same path that we saw before. So here we're just adding in the RAF nucleus and the hypothalamus getting the release of these beta endorphins. The paracetamol gray matter, RAF nucleus, serotonin release, and enkephalin interneuron are the same as our level two pain control theory through the second order neuron. This is our third order neuron, so we're trying to activate signals within the brain to cause a beta endorphin release. So here we're trying to get a rhythmic contraction to cause the T cell to activate, cause the reticular formation to make the hypothalamus release beta endorphins via the pituitary. And these beta endorphins then cause the paracetamol gray matter to activate the RAF nucleus to release serotonin. And this release in serotonin then activates the enkephalin interneuron to release enkephalin to deactivate the T cell. These beta endorphins, serotonin, enkephalin, are going to decrease pain due to the deactivation of this T cell from sending the pain fibers via the C fibers. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and review through the first, second, and third order neuron patterns and the three different theories of pain control through the human body.